Hello, dear students. I'm just going to explain you all the questions, not all actually, all the weighted questions in here in midweek worksheet number 14 of the 2026 level batch. When you are just about to add two vectors in the same direction, you can simply add them one after another this way. So the resultant vector will be described like in here. So when you represent a result and vector, may I make sure that you put double arrow like this. Okay, here in the second one, you have options to use any of these at first. So if I start to use the downward arrow, then I'll use the other one. Now have a really good look at, you always start to certain vector from a certain point of starting and you have to finish it. So always the resultant vector is lying from the starting point to the finishing point, right? Okay. Now you can start with that vector as well as this one. Let me start the other one. Okay. Now I will start with that one and I'll draw the next slanted one to the round word, like in this manner. Now you will see the resultant of starting and finishing is here like this man uh, now i mark the result let me show you a certain wonderful result you will see it's not two different things it's the same now i can easily all have these two on each other now isn't that the same it will actually overlap on each other when you get these two results together it is none other than vector parallelogram okay so that means you can keep yeah, start up with any vector, it does not matter. Right. Now the third one, have a good look at you can start up with anything here. I will personally start up with the horizontal one. Then I'll get something downward. It looks weird, ne? Now see the final one. Final one. Now you say the starting to finish the result and is Certain weird set is not the parallel so polygons what we used to see. Okay, let me just construct it in the in another way. I'll start with the downward one to the horizontal one, finally with the slanted one. Now you will see the resultant vector is so there. Now let me show you one thing. Aren't those two things the same? Can all have it's the same no difference it is the same vector okay you can start it from anywhere you would like and you can also start it from this one slanted one downward one and the horizontal one still the result of me i like so okay Downward arrow is a long one. You can start from any vector and finish. Still, you will get the final vector whatever the day. These are also polygons, but I have to tell you one important thing. These type of polygons, what we used to see, these are the convex polygons. These are concave polygons. So, whatever the polygon it is concave, so concave, your resultant will be the same. This knowledge will be really important to deal with uh, finding the result of vector in vector polygon method. Now the next one. Now okay, two vectors. Don't put one. Okay. Now the result I like this. You can start that one either in the other one as well. Let me just show it. So, Slanted one this is the downward one. Result and vector lie in the same. It doesn't matter where you start up. Okay, now here, according to the following vector diagram below, okay, first of all, going for this one, 
I would like to start something like drawing a certain vector of like 40 meter. Okay, you walk and you change the direction and you uh, go to another 30 meter. It's not 70, right? So it is the display displacement is the vector. So starting to your finishing point, you draw and you are going to do something very strange. Then your friend, your friend reached to here in a straight one. Uh, that is the resultant, right? Resultant final vector. But apart from friend coming here, you decide to go back to the original point and meet your friend. At this time, you choose a different uh, straight one to go back and see him quickly why he's not joined to you at that point. Okay. Now you move back to the starting point, your finishing point and the starting point are not too different. It is the same. That means your dis final displacement is zero. That means your final vector is going to be the zero. Resultant vector is going to be the zero. So if there is a certain clockwise, it's like this. Uh, clockwise. This is clockwise. Why? All the arrows are rotating in the direction where box, uh, arms of the box move. And for similar way of any anti-clockwise motion of vectors. It is anti-clockwise. With a clockwise or anti-clockwise, your result will be the zero. 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 So this is something like that. See? Maybe where you start with one, two, three, came back to the place. So that means F1 plus F2 plus F3 gives you the result and obstacle. That's it. Um, now, two forces, magnitude of 3 Newton and uh, 4 Newton respectively act on a body. The maximum possible magnitude of the result of these forces is we, I told you when these are in the same direction parallel to each other, it will give you the maximum resultant in that case 3 plus 4 is just 7 mm. right, uh, the next one a man who walk a certain distance but not in a straight line have a zero displacement yes uh, can have a zero displacement Man who uh, has walked a certain distance but not in a straight line. Zero displacement can possible. Not have a negative displacement. But we can't say he can have a negative displacement. It's like this is the starting point for tree and a frog start to move like this way. Now the frog has gone to here. Ah, that is the possible. But if the frog, this is the positive direction, if the frog moves to here, that is your negative. So why it's not a straight path, the frog can move like an error here, that's all. This is wrong. Have a displacement higher in magnitude to the displacement distance, you can have displacement. Distance, yes, can have big magnitudes, right? The smallest distance is the displacement itself. Can have a displacement higher in magnitude than distance? Never. Have a displacement equal to the magnitude of distance? Yes. It's a multiple answer actually. A and B all correct. All these people. Uh, which one of the following is not a vector quantity? Hmm. Velocity is a vector. Force is a vector. Energy is not a vector. Momentum is a vector. Energy is not a vector quantity. Hmm. A girl runs once around a circular track with radius of 65 meter and a speed of 2 m minus 1, her displacement is 
Now, I'm pretty sure you might be riding these equations, okay? You're starting point and you just move in a circular path and you finished over there. You might be just trying to find out you see circumference equal to group by R and all this. This is not going to apply. Why? See, finish it back in the same point, regardless of how the speed and what is the radius, nothing does matter because it just came back to the original position. The displacement back to the displacement. Okay. If a car rounds a bend at a constant speed, then it will undergo zero acceleration if it is just taking a bend like this. Taking a bend. And a bend means will undergo what? Definitely, it will undergo non zero acceleration. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's uh, acceleration. Zero acceleration is wrong. This is what called centripetal acceleration. You don't know about that, but you know this all level definition for the acceleration. What is acceleration? The rate of change of velocity. Changing direction constantly when taking the point. That means the velocity doesn't change in the magnitude, but in the direction change, it's a vector. Even the direction change means the rate of change of velocity. That is an acceleration. It will accelerate, yes. Velocity will remain constant, no. Rate of change of velocity will be zero now. Answer is B. Mm, which of the following vector diagram is resultant of the three vectors zero? Okay, this one is not zero anticlockwise. This one moves clockwise. No arrows are meeting together. So this one is not two arrows meeting together. This one will by this one here, here, here in the clockwise. Completely untasted. When two arrows come and meet together with the head to head, head to head means there will be a result. If no arrows meeting like this and one head to tail, all the arrows joining with head to tail, that is resultant zero. I explain that in another way. Okay. Now this was kind of like hard for many students because they just forgot the very basic. Uh, o level, grade 10, physics, very bad. Ne? Now, when there is an object which is applied with the force of it, that force is mass. You forgot that there is a weight all the time. And then there is a rock, that means the rock applies a tensor. Uh, these are the three forces you don't know the names of that. Somehow, one force will be here, another force will be here. Result is like this called the triangular. This will work, but this is not there. Let's try to draw the other type of shapes with the this. And here. Downward, like this. And the other one. Is there anything? Yes. This one is also like that, but it's not because the F force is to the left. So that not be. This one is also up. This is the force diagram. Now, this is a very simple one. Two forces of 20 Newton and 50 Newton act in simultaneously on the body, which one of the following forces cannot be resultant of two forces? Cannot be. I told you, when you add in the same direction, it will give the resultant of the biggest. 20 plus 50 means it is 70. The smallest means in the opposite directions, 50. And the other side is like 20. So the resultant will be 30. Right. Smallest is 30, the biggest is 70. 
So your range should include 30 and 70 or anything in between. 20 cannot be. 30 can. 40 can in between. 70 can. This is the answer. Now, 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 the summation of two forces is 15. Uh, the product of this six. Okay, the summation means R equals to P plus Q, something like that. So it is like 15 equals to P plus Q. The other thing is um, product R equals to P times Q. So R is 15. P6 equals to P times Q. So whatever you can use now, I will find out the value of P from here. Uh, P is going to be something like 56 over Q. When I apply, I get like 50 equals to 56 over Q plus Q, right? So when I first multiply, it's going to be 50 equals 56 plus 6 Q over 6. Uh, first multiply, this will be 90 equals to 56 plus 6 Q. Oh, sorry, sorry. This is uh, 6 over Q, not 6, it's my value, it's not 6, it's Q, it's Q, it's Q, <clears throat> then when I first multiply, it's going to be 15 equals to 56, plus Q to the power 2, over Q, then first multiply, 15 equals to 56, Plus Q power 2. So I can get it like 2Q square minus 15Q plus 56. So you will get to when you are just resolving these things, you will get like Q minus 7 and product of Q minus 8. So either of these will give you like Q minus 8 equals to 0 or q minus 7 is equal to 0. So finally, q is equals to 8 or q equals to 7. It can be of these two. So finally, I have to apply this in like find the magnitude of forces and handle between them. Hmm. Resultant is 13. So resultant is 13. You have to find out the angle now. R square is equal to P square plus Q square plus two P Q cos theta. So that means 13 square equals to 15 square plus, sorry, uh, 8 square plus 7 square plus 2 times 7 times 8 times cos theta. Mm -hmm. 169 equals to 64 plus 49. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does it suggest? 60, 130. When I subtract 169 minus 130 equals to 2 times 7 times 8 cos theta it's going to be 56 56 equals to 2 times 7 times 8 cos theta so 7 times is like 8 8 can eight cancel off it's going to be Half equals to cos theta. So theta equals to half cos inverse. Cos inverse means you have to find out what is cos half. Theta will be 6.5.
60 degree in between. That's it. Very simple. Mm -hmm. Two perpendicular forces, four newton and three newton, pass on. The magnitude of the direction of the resultant force, respectively. Four. Other one is three newton. So the resultant will be adding here. Mm -hmm. It should definitely be five because it's plus five degrees speed plus one six the fourth one. Here the logic is right. You just keep the downward one like that way, but you can slide the rightward one to here. By right? I told you, if there is a vector p, an equivalent vector. You can keep anywhere with the same horizontal, with same parallel line on, on it, parallel to it below, parallel to it above, parallel to it the forward, parallel to it the backward. The magnitude will be the same. You can just make arrangements like that. Final, final vector will represent like this. Hmm. That's it. Um, Draw a scale diagram of 25 centimeter meter and 15 meter added and subtract each an angle of 30 degrees into different diagrams and find out the magnitude of the resultant of reflection of 25 meter displacement. Right. Let me start it up. Okay, firstly, I want to draw over a suitable scale. Now I'm going to represent one centimeter screw, five meter scale. So 25 meter will be represented by five centimeter, while uh, 15 meter will be represented by three centimeter, right? Let me draw the first line for the addition, purpose of addition. I'll draw it in the blue color. Just five centimeter. I stop there. Then I need to measure the angle of thirty degree from this. And the thirty degree line is here. Let me just draw a straight line using this one. The thirty degree up for the addition. It should face the same direction. This is about addition. Right? How will you look at it? It is uh, 25 meter in terms of 5 centimeter, 15 meter in terms of 3 centimeter, and the angle is 30 degree here. Right, okay, let me just uh, reduce the size of this one and okay. three, 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 that is my final position of this one. And I erase the remaining part. Now I can draw the final resultant from the starting to finish. Like this. This is the starting point and this is the finishing point. Now there is a certain length. I can measure the length. Length is nearly 7.8. Okay, 7.8. 7.8 centimeters. So, according to this scale, you have to find magnified by 5. So, the R resultant is R equals to 7.8 multiplied by uh, 5. So, 
78 feet, uh, by perhaps 10 feet, like 39. Nearly like the middle, 39 meters. Let me just find out the angle between them. The angle between them is going to be basic over here, exactly. Right here. Mm -hmm. That is like nearly 12 degree, nearly. Nearly 12 degree. Angle is just 12 degrees. Now let me just draw the structure for right with the 25. Now the subtraction mod. Let me draw that line here. Again, five centimeter. I'm going to mark. Okay, finalized. Now I need to draw thirty degree to there. Let me just show you one thing. If I draw this line as the mass of the previous, you can see the result is still a very big one. Uh, previous one was what? R equals to P plus Q. Now my operation is not that. Now my operation is what? R equals to P minus Q. So minus means the result should be low. Then. In this one, result should be higher. Right. It should not definitely be this vector. That means it should be the negative of this vector. If this is AB, so the other vector should be what? When you draw from B to A, you write B A vector in the same direction. Oh, it is the same as what? Minus A B. Right. Now I'm going to place that minus A B vector, which is B uh, centimeters in the downward direction. Let me write it I'll draw it for another three centimeters. Right. Mm. Now you can see there is the vector, final vector is a small one. Uh, that is suitable for this one, it's small. Then you should be small. Yes. It's starting to finish, the result can be here. Now let me measure the amount. Let me measure this amount. I'll keep it over here. It is uh, 2.8 nearly, 2.8 times 10 over 2, 5 means 10 over 2, 10 means 28, 2 over 2 means 40, 14 meters. Mm. It is 2.8 centimeter in terms of meter, 14 meter, small vector, that's suitable, reasonable. Okay. Mm -hmm. I discussed all of that. So now in the very final more things. Okay. The scalars are 
the quantities with both magnetic options and directions definitely not only in the magnetic or non direction specific direction quantities with only magnitude no sorry yes only magnitude and time distance and work are still as correct statement will be and what is the answer with only two vectors speed is the scalar vector is displacement is a vector velocity is a vector distance is not weight is a vector and the uh, mass into gravitational electron there is the direction mg acceleration is a vector this is the answer let's check the other two as well uh force is a vector temperature is not pressure is the uh, Actually, unit level is the vector. So, can be level. We can say it like as if uh, here as well. But time is definitely not a vector. So, the answer is the one. Right. Uh, magnitude of two vectors are 12 and 8 newton respectively. What are the maximum and minimum forces? This will lay the foundation for the next few questions in the next page. Here again, the magnitude of two vectors are equal to 10. So, that is 7, 8, 10, 12, sorry. The resultant is just 20. That is the maximum. The smallest is 12 and 8 is the opposite direction. 8. So, the resultant is like here. Okay. R is just uh, 4. The maximum and minimum of 20 and now let's move on to the next few questions. The resultant of two vectors 8 and 10 cannot be. I told you the maximum is 8 and 10. Just stay in. The minimum is uh, 2. Anything smaller than that can't have. Anything bigger than that can't have. The answer we got anything smaller. So anything smaller than 2 means cannot have. Right? Technically, it's wrong. Right? We got that answer. Okay, students. Now let's move on to the other ones. So, and bio, can it be? Yes, right? It is in the range. It is in the range. Five in the range. Five is in the range. Eighty thirteen is in the range. Six in the range. And nine is in the range. So the answer is that's a seven. Answer is this one. So the if two vectors have magnitude of uh, 5 and 12, the angle between them is 90. What is the angle between the result? So, very simple. The magnitude of this result. Here, if you can remember the Pythagoras triplets, right? Pythagoras triplets, and this is the just remember the Pythagoras triplets. 5 square and 12 square. What is it? R square is equal to B square plus B square. I'm not writing anything because it is very understandable. For 12 square is 144. 5 square is 25. 144 plus 25 means the answer will be 169. Square root of 169 is 39. Second one. I don't need to write anything because that's a straightforward answer. That's why I told you to remember uh first 25 square numbers, first 10 cube numbers, and first 10 uh by the very strict levels, it will be really great point deal with. Okay, students, so I just give you a clear and great explanation about this is the chip 40. I will keep uh, uploading worksheet. A discussion after one week because I just let you try for the entire week. In the next week, I'll upload. In the same week, I upload who want to the work. Now for the midweek 15, I'll upload in the next week like that. Each week 
a week later, there will be a discussion video of the midweek budget. God bless you.